Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Basurto and my presentation is on exclusionary rule and entrapment. This is for CJ Field 5 criminal procedures. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the definition of exclusionary rule. It is a rule that prevents the government from using most evidence that would be gathered in violation of the United States Constitution. So that it states pretty much in simple terms that evidence from people who was forced to talk, a person that was forced to talk, will not be admissible in court. Also, evidence that has been taken from an illegal search of property, an illegal search and seizure, a violation of the Fourth Amendment, may not be used in court. American court systems use the exclusionary rule to deter police officers and other government agents from abusing our constitutional rights. What uh, put this rule into action was the decision in MAP versus Ohio. It established that the exclusionary rule applies to evidence gained from an unreasonable search or seizure in violation of the Fourth Amendment. The decision in Miranda versus Arizona established that the exclusionary rule applies to improperly elicited self-incriminatory statements gathered in violation of the Fifth Amendment and to evidence gained in situations where the government violated the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to counsel. So, let me go ahead and continue with more information on the exclusionary rule. So, if evidence falls that falls within the scope of the exclusionary rule led law enforcement officials to other evidence which they would not have otherwise located, then that then the exclusionary rule applies to that newly discovered evidence. But it is subject to a few exceptions. The newfound evidence is called the fruit of the poisonous tree. It's also known as derivative evidence. The purpose of this rule is to, again, deter law enforcement officers from conducting searches or seizures in violation of the Fourth Amendment and provide remedies to defendants whose rights have been infringed. There are good faith exceptions. So, under the good faith exception, the evidence will not be excluded if it was obtained by an officer who was reasonably relying on a search warrant that turned out to not be valid. Under Illinois versus Kroll, evidence may be admissible if the officers rely on a statute that was later deemed to be invalidated. In Herring versus the United States, the court found that the good faith exception to the exclusionary rule applies when police employees erred in maintaining records in a warrant database. There are also more exceptions such as attenuation of the taint, independent source, and inevitable discovery. We're going to go ahead and move on to entrapment. Entrapment is was conceived to be, from the Sorrells versus United States, the conception 
and planning of an off offense by an officer and his procurement of its commission by one who would not have perpetrated it except for the trickery, persuasion, or fraud of the officer. So, in simple terms, it's the government's inducement of an otherwise innocent individual to commit a crime. So, there needs to be a balance here. The balance comes from the need of law enforcement to rely on undercover techniques against the interest in ensuring that innocent individuals are not pressured or tricked into illegal activity. That balance is found by the needs of specific situations that may involve undercover techniques. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is my presentation on exclusionary rule and entrapment. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your night or day, depending on the time period that you are watching this. Thank you very much.